if you can understand the past, then you can be forewarned for the future. It's not that history is going to repeat itself exactly, okay? But if you kind of know you're a policymaker, you're a, you're, you're, a, you're an economist, a scholar, you know what happened in the past, then that is, that's information that's in your head. It goes into your, if you're a, mo a modeler, you know, that goes into the kinds of models you do. Um, and just operating in the here and now, and not knowing about the past, then things come along you say, gee, why didn't I think of that? And so that's why history is very important, not just for people who practice it, economic historians who do it because we love it and we, we're interested, but for people who are not economic historians to know that if you don't understand and know about the past, you're ru running great risks. <clears throat> One of the special things about Michael is that he's not a pure economic historian. And what he does is he takes the techniques of economic history, particularly a narrative approach and pulling together new data, and marries that really with the best sort of modern theory and statistical techniques. And what that does is not only produce better economic history, but it also better addresses the questions that's relevant for policymakers. So what is, I think, the real contribution, he creates this dialogue across economic historians, macroeconomists, and policymakers, which is really what make, makes him quite special. And so Mike was uh, born at the right time. So he worked with Milton Friedman and led the way in, in, in taking modern theory uh, and looking back at past experience. And when I came up, I said, I like Mike's work. I want to do something similar. And I've, I've kind of followed in his footsteps. So he's been an inspiration to people like me and others who work on monetary theory, monetary practice. And, and are concerned with improving the institutions that manage our money and banking systems today. And what we do is, we're not satisfied with theory alone, we want to go back and look at the past and see how the past institutions worked against interpretations based on our current theory. Yeah. Well, and that's what makes us different. Mike says, I like the theory, but I want to go back and look at the past uh -huh. to confirm or, 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 or deny the uh, institutional structures that we, we think we like. He's really a team builder in a sense that he uh, has a lot of ideas and he's very adept at, uh, at getting uh, people to work with him and, and pursue those ideas and then he can juggle so many balls in the air at one time. You know, he's got so many different projects going and, and uh, you know, he's full of energy at, at 70 and still going strong. Uh, he's, his contributions come from a deep background both in economic theory as well as in history which is an interesting combination because he's really uh, got a foot both in the economic history camp and one in the monetary economics, macroeconomics group. So he's perhaps the best known economic historian to the, to the monetary macroeconomists, uh, the Fed and the academia. And he really bridges a, a gap which is sometimes a pretty large gap between the economic historians and the, the theorists, if you will. So, you know, he's really done a lot for both the uh, economic history crowd as well as for the uh, general economic theory. He's one of the outstanding historian, monetary historians of his generation and maybe of several other generations. He's done work with almost every noted scholar in, uh, in monetary history. He's done path-breaking studies on the way in which, most recently, the way in which the uh, exchange rate system operates with Anna Schwartz and one of your colleagues here at, at Cleveland and uh, just many other things. He's the expert on the gold standard, on the Bretton Woods system, on all those different arrangements that we've had in monetary economics. Really a major scholar. Mike has been important for bringing together um, economic history and monetary uh, economics. He takes the history seriously. He takes monetary theory and monetary economics seriously. But the other thing he does that I think is um, interesting and unique is that he is quite non-doctrinaire in an era where the economics profession has become more doctrinaire, more ideological. Mike, over time, has become more eclectic and data-driven. I think there's a lesson in that for all of us.